everyone, it's Julia. Today I'm going to be making some um, mug rugs or coasters out of this fun leaf fabric. I found this fabric last winter at a quilt shop, a quilt show, and I'm going to link the information on it down below if any of you are interested. It might still be available. But I'm thinking any simple design would work for this if you can find fabric with a, maybe a simple flower or heart or even like a house design or something fun like that would be great. Um, I'm taking an ironing on the back of these leaves, a fle fusible fleece. I have a, a scrap piece of muslin there that I'm using for a press cloth. And I'm pressing those from both the, the bottom and the top just to secure that fleece. And then cutting these out and I am leaving approximately a quarter of an inch all the way around. I am cutting off the stems of these leaves. I just thought that would be too fiddly to sew around. So those, I, the, the leaf or the stem I am cutting off. And instead I'm going to be using this jute for the stems. Um, and I'm going to it's double it up and I'm going to be stitching this with like a multi-step zigzag stitch just going back and forth on each one of these. I wanted to say that jute is washable um, and it doesn't shrink. I've, I've used it a lot in some of my designs. It just gives a real cool rustic look. So those are all stitched on all my little stems and now on to the lining. I'm using this bright pink batik fabric for the lining. I just checked to see if there was a difference in the front and the back there. There really wasn't um, and a lot of batiks you can hardly tell so I'm just pinning these on um, and I'm leaving uh, about a two inch, I'm marking about a two, two and a half inch opening. I just don't want to forget when I'm at my sewing machine uh, to leave an opening for turning and trying not to waste any of the fabric on that batik. So pinning them rather close. Um, and now at my sewing machine, and I'm taking that quarter inch seam allowance. I am using my Juki straight stitch. Um, normally, I, if any of you follow me, I, I use my a Janome sewing machine a lot. Um, but this is my Juki, and I absolutely love my Juki sewing machine. It is only a straight stitch, um, but it does a wonderful free motion stitch as well. Um, it's really heavy. It's almost a semi-commercial, I would say. It's just a, yeah, it's a workhorse. So it's really fast. Um, and that is completely done. And now I'm taking it and cutting off that seam allowance. I do not cut that lining or that backing at all on that opening. I want as much fabric on that opening as I can get so I can turn it easy. And then clipping those curves. Turning it inside out and trying to get as many of those little spots poked um, or turned. And then we'll also we'll, we'll be sticking my turning tool in there and poking, poking those little corners out. And then pulling that jute too. Ironing it flat and then ironing that opening. Or turning that opening and getting that nice and flat. Now back to my sewing machine. I am using a multicolored pink thread. It has some variations of pink in it. And I have that both on my top and my, my bo bottom or bobbin. A little bit more about this, the Juki sewing machine. If any of you are interested, um, like I said, it is a straight stitch, but it does a wonderful free motion. So I have my free motion foot on. And this is not um, electron it's like electronic type of machine like my, my Janome as soon as I drop those feed dogs it automatically goes to a stitch length of zero and it loosens up that pressure on the pressure foot I have to manually do that um, on my on my Geno on my Juki and so I I set my stitch length to zero and I loosened my, my pressure on my on my there's just a knob then I turn to zero for that pressure on my uh, pressure foot. And I want to quilt these using, just kind of following those, I don't know, veins or whatever you want to call it of these leaves. 
And I'm trying to go pretty much all over this just to get all the areas quilted. Really simple, this is just a really easy way to just get your free motion stitching a little bit more exact. No pressure at all. I am gonna share with you how I finish off the edges too. Um, and I'm gonna do that right now with my, um, with my free motion stitching. And here I go, I knew that I wouldn't be really be able to do a very great straight stitch. So I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna do this wavy stitch, getting really co close to the edge. coming upon that opening now and it's kind of sticking out a little bit and so um, I'm gonna grab my I don't know what this is called <laughs> this tool starts with an S but I'm just gonna poke that that little fabric in there and then just continue on when I get to the cord here it goes over qu really quite well. I just slow down a little bit. And then to finish it, I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple times and tie that knot. When I started, I forgot to mention, I did raise that bobbin thread up because I didn't want a nest at, that that bobbin sometimes makes. But I love the way the top and the bottom look. And now I'm just gonna decide, I'm just gonna twist this a couple times and then tie a knot and then trim this little jute I just think these would be really fun sitting on a coffee table. I do have them listed in my Etsy store if anybody's interested. I'll have that link down below. Um, and here's, but they all of them are a little bit different. Uh, they just, I love the colors. I just think they just have a fun, whimsical look to them. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a chance to create this week. I do have some pictures at the end. Um, bye for now.